Hey YouTubers, what's up? Uh, that's what those cool YouTube guys say, isn't it? So, uh, we've done that bit. Mmm! Right, YouTube form aside, let's crack on with talking about a couple of lenses. Right. <clears throat> Here we go. On the D3, we have the, this is not autofocus, by the way, so if this isn't sharp, um, it's not your fault, it's mine. This is the um, 35 F2D. Now, when I first had a D700, I had the 1.8 DX left over from um, my previous camera, and I put the D3X to not auto detect the DX lens. And I found it actually worked quite well as a candid sort of indoor portrait lens. Um, really very nice colours with the D3, uh, sorry, the D700. This is a D3. This also has very nice colours. Uh, this lens, well, I sort of sold a load of stuff to buy Fuji back in early 2017 wasn't happy, missed the Nikon look, went back to the D700, um, but I sold a load of lenses, so um, I got this F2 um, D lens, uh, which works very nicely. Um, they say you can get oil on the shutter blades, and I've seen another video that says if you store it sort of front face down, that doesn't happen. I've never had a problem with this one. Um, it does work pretty well delivers nice results and I got it for 140 quid with a Sony mount attached to it which the YouTube, uh, YouTube, uh, this is YouTube, um, eBay seller uh, neglected to mention was actually stuck on because the release mechanism was broken but the camera shop managed to get it off for me so I had this lens for 140 quid and I've been pleased with it. Um, that one, <coughs> the 60mm micro in AFD, again um, a screwdriver lens, but if you like the older fashion cameras with mirrors and uh, built-in autofocus motors, then what's not to like? Um, probably a hundred quid cheaper used than the AFG version, um, which uh, I've also had and wasn't more impressed with than this, to be honest. Uh, this is, um, you know, these these things are bargains now. Um, go for them. Aha! Next, the 50 mil 1.4D. Now this gets some disparaging reviews, and it's true, it's not very sharp, wide open, and it's probably not all that sharp at f/2. But once you get to f2.2 and start closing down, it looks pretty good. Um, I really like a photographer on Flickr, a French photographer called Dominic Fusina. I think that's F-U-S-I-N-A. And um, he has got a lovely portfolio with people photography in and uh, has done back in 2010 to about 2000. 14 or something like that. He was using a D3S with one of these lenses on at f2.2 for most of his street shooting and the colours and the look were fabulous. So check it out. He has gone sort of Sigma Art 1.4 50mm now but I mean one of these you can get for 140 quid. The Sigma Art is probably going to cost you the best part of 500 on eBay. So um, yeah, I like this lens. In fact, this replaced the 1.8G lens. And um, I think it just, some of the wider apertures up to, um, you know, F2.2, F3.2 and things, I do think this is slightly nicer than the G lens. And it's kind of got the older, warmer look. So uh, I am a fan. Um, I saw a Review by Verhagen recently, who uh, quite likes this lens too. It's probably a bit cheap for him though, he probably got a posher one as well. <clears throat> what else do we like? Um, oh yes, 
this is an amazing thing I bought just recently. A friend of mine brought round um, Canon uh, 3.5 135mm lens, a real classic one with a breech lock, and he was shooting it on his Sony and getting really nice results with focus peaking. Now, I sort of mentioned I might be interested in one of these um, nickels. Uh, I mean, the 2.8 is the classic one, but that is twice the price of this. I paid ooh, 99 for this, which I actually think is a bargain. Um, I couldn't have found... Um, there weren't any cheaper ones on YouTube, but I just got lucky with this one. Uh, and it's actually an AIS. When I didn't even know they existed. I thought the 3.5 finished with the AI, but they just made AIS for about 18 months. Um, so there you are, these do exist. Um, and it is corking actually. Um, I put it on the D3. Um, it's not 135, it's not really a handheld lens. Uh, you can do it of course. Um, but I mean if you're doing portraits, why not just put your camera on the tripod? Um, turn down the resistance on the bore head slightly so you can move the camera, uh, the, the camera and lens around a little bit like Daniel Norton. I like Daniel Norton by the way. Um, and then you've got multiple focus points in a D3 or a D3X or a D3S or a D4. Um, you put one of those on the eye um, and just focus this by hand. A beautifully smooth action. That is incredibly nice. I'm just so taken with this. Um, you know, I haven't had a, a manual focus lens for a very long time and um, <laughs> I thought my eyesight wasn't good enough for them and um, it was a bad idea but um, as I say mount this kind of tripody for portraits and um, just watch the little um, focus confirmation dot in your screen and um, you know it works a treat produces very nice results uh, let's put that down <coughs> Ooh, here we go <laughs> this is a bit of a beast. The 105 uh, f2 DC lens. This is a kind of expensive luxury lens I didn't think I'd buy. Um, but um, I paid a visit to a really top photographer in Weymouth just by chance got invited there after a forum conversation and um, uh, discussing various lenses and I was curious about something, not this one. I was curious to compare the 85 1.8D with the 1.8G which um, my brother and I have and um, so he uh, invited us down for the afternoon to play with lenses and shoot in his natural light studio and um, we tried a whole bunch of his he put a whole bunch of lenses out for us to try top guy really you know he was kind of showing us all these books he was he's published in and uh, he shot for Italian Vogue and um, and uh, yeah, he was I mean he was kind of completely out of our league um, <laughs> but we but I guess he was just bored with lockdown and uh, and uh, fancy the chat and fancied meeting someone off the forums so anyway we went down there and we tried a bunch of his lenses and we tried this one and me and my brother we like the look of this the best of all. Um, we normally shoot with flash but in uh, Ken's studio, his name is Ken, um, we shot natural light on his recommendation and um, <laughs> we've sort of um, had the scales lifted from our eyes and uh, you can produce, you know, we were relying on you know studio flash portraits but actually we want to do lots more natural light now. Um, and uh, this lens has got a great look and um, great colour and um, like a lot of our lenses it's the it's D so it's always going to be manual focus on the A to Z adapter on the if you put it on a Z camera we don't actually have a Z camera at the moment but we will probably get one sometime I actually bought the adapter because I saw it like 50 quid cheaper than anywhere else it was a bargain sale, so um, I bought that just to put into storage for when I do get a Z6, um, which I probably will do. Um, uh, you know, they, you can pick them up for um, between 900 and 1,000 quid now in nice nick, and um, so that's a good possibility. But 
you know, I really like the classic D-series cameras um, and uh, I'm in no great hurry to do that. But uh, this lens is fabulous and, um, you know, it produces a lovely look. Um, in a way, the little one is because I, you know, also fancied having a go at 135, which I haven't done much with before. I haven't really shot with a 135 since I was like basically, uh, you know, a kid with a Tokina 2.8 um, thing on, um, you know, cameras years and years ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've sort of got the 135 bug now. And obviously the the 135 version of this is even more expensive than this. By the way, it was just a coincidence that after we visited this can and dried this lens and liked it so much, we saw one for under 500 quid, which is quite unusual, or used to be, and uh, in very nice nick from a shop with a guarantee. So um, we've got this, but uh, the 135, uh, they usually go for about 150 quid more, and um, I thought, well, we've already blown a ton of money. And so, and my friend shooting his uh, Canon 35s made me think about a manual 35 for Nikon. So uh, here we go, we got that. And um, actually, having shot with this, I can't really see the, the need to buy the more expensive um, 2.8 version, um, you know, which is going to be, you know, that, that's going to be uh, 180 to, um, you know, 220 or something like that you know almost twice well probably you know twice what I paid for this but twice the average price for these things which is a bit more than I paid um, oh I'm just waffling now aren't I so um, cheerio youtubers and uh, oh let's just show the posh lens again shall we um, yes there it is it's probably out of focus this by the way because that camera uh, the lens on the 810 there um, is in manual focus, so um, this is probably all blurred. Um, cheerio.